Welcome to Lessons from the Road. This video will provide you with some important information about Victoria's licensing system, as well as advice and tips from parents who have been through the process of supervising learner drivers. The hardest thing is stopping yourself from getting worked up. You just have to learn to control your own nerves and make sure you're giving them clear instructions. Well, you've, you've got to give them all the experience you can. Once they're on their P's, they're on their own. It'd be very easy to say, not today, I'm busy. But you have to be disciplined to find the time to clock up the practice hours. Uh, if you're a parent, calm down. It's, it's so much easier to learn without somebody yelling at you from the passenger seat. The video is divided into eight episodes. You can watch it from start to finish, skip forward to an episode that interests you, or return to an early episode at any time. Let's get started. In Victoria, we have what's called a graduated licensing system. The aim is to make younger drivers safer drivers. Think of it as an apprenticeship system where young drivers must gain at least 120 hours of low-risk driving experience under different conditions before graduating to a probationary license. This approach works. What is important for safety is the total amount and variety of on-road experience. As parents, you play a critical role in helping your child become a safer driver by supervising their practice. Supervising them isn't always easy, but once they've got their licence and they're driving around without you, well, you'd be glad you made the extra effort. Once your child has passed their learner permit, the idea is to help them to learn to drive gradually, one stage at a time to the four stages of learning to drive. Reading the Guide for Supervising Drivers that comes with your learner logbook is a great start. You've got to start with the basics, really, and only introduce them to new skills when they're ready for it. Otherwise, it's just more than they can handle. Yeah, you can't rush it. It's not a race. Jackie was driving at a snail's pace to begin with. As soon as she was ready, we were driving along highways, you know, turning at busy intersections. Through this gradual process, the learner develops safe driving habits. Choosing the correct speed, judging gaps in traffic, spotting hazards on the road. These are the sorts of skills they'll gain with regular practice. There are a few safeguards in place. The learner has to be over 16, and the supervising driver has to be fully licensed and over 21 years of age, not a friend or a sibling on P-plates. I got my learners a couple of weeks after my 16th. Yeah, late in September, I recall. I do have an older brother, but he's not allowed to supervise me. Yeah, my eldest tie, he's still on his P-plates. The learner has to have zero blood alcohol and the supervising driver has to be below 0.05. In addition, learners can't use mobile phones for any purpose while driving. That means no calling, no sending and no reading texts. The learner and supervisor should turn their phones to silent while driving or leave them at home. The one thing she had trouble giving up was her phone. I just made her leave it at home so it wouldn't distract her. Learning to drive takes longer than most people think. To get their probationary licence when they turn 18 and before they turn 21, learners need to have their permit for at least 12 months. And they need to clock up at least 120 hours of driving experience in a broad range of conditions, including 10 hours at night. I got my learners when I was 16. I have to wait until I'm 18 to take the test. That's a whole two months away. And we'll see if you're ready. I think that's sensible. I don't think it hurts to actually have more than 120 hours if you can. Before they can take an on-road test, learners have to record their minimum 120 hours in their official Vic Roads learner logbook. The logbook must be completed properly, following the instructions in the front. If the logbook is found to be incorrect, then the booking fee and test fees are lost. The learner may not be able to sit the drive test and may have to wait six weeks before attempting to take the test again. The logbook is a crucial part of the process. I'm a chippy, so I have to keep a vehicle log for my tax, so when Tim got his learners, I just told him to put his learners logbook in the glove box next to mine, and he uh, fills it out at the end of each trip. And then I sign it, and that's a good habit to get into. It was a bit of a hassle at first, um, but it only takes a few minutes, and then it's really good for learning where you've been, what you've done, what practice you've still got to do, um, that sort of thing. There can be heavy penalties for learners and supervising drivers caught cheating if they've added extra hours in the logbook. Just remember, fraudulent entries in the logbook mean the learner is cheating themselves and increasing their crash risk once driving on their own. Remember these key points. Victoria has a graduated licensing system with a step-by-step -step approach to learning to drive. 
Learners need at least 120 hours of driving experience in a broad range of conditions, including 10 hours at night, before they can take the on-road test. And they need to complete their logbooks accurately.